Hello, I'm your professor for this uh, trimester, John Flood. Um, some of you will have seen me before in Ideas, Issues and Inquiry in trimester two. Um, some of you, I'm new. This is uh, the introductory outline lecture. It's just a short discussion about what we are doing uh, and what I want you to do and how we are going to do it. Those of you who have um, worked with me before will understand my approach. So basically, I will give you a set of materials to read and think about. There are some focus questions for you to use as ways of thinking about the material. Do realize that th those questions are mainly guides to get you thinking. We may not answer them, we may answer some of them, we may answer a whole series of other questions that uh, arise as we go through. Uh, most of the work will be done in the tutorial. This part, the lecture part, if you like, or, or the outline part, is really for you to um, uh, uh, get an idea of what we're going to do, and as I say, then look at the materials and then be ready to talk about them and discuss them and answer questions. Week one, well, first, let me back up. This is a six-week course, so we have six separate topics each week. Um, the uh, tutorials will be recorded, so if you happen to miss one, you can go back and, and watch it again. Um, so, but I would like you to be there if possible because it's good to be able to get people's contributions. Um, okay, the assessment in the course is really quite straightforward. You're going to write a research paper, um, but it's going to be done in three phases. You're going to come up with a topic and a brief outline. Uh, then, which I will review and give back to you, and uh, depending on um, what I say, you can put it back in again uh, and as a revision. That's the only time you get a chance to revise anything. The second part is the outline of the paper, where you're going to go, some idea of the literature review, um, and so that you'll be ready then to go into the main body of the research paper, which is the final part of the assessment, which is the complete um, research paper. Fully referenced, fully sourced, uh, as you would write any other kind of paper. So that's the assessment. The um, course, as I say, is uh, six topics. Week one is uh, the introduction, which I'm really looking at kind of the history and background of technology, the internet, um, and a whole series of things. And I'm starting in a slightly unusual way, which is I want you to read a short story by an Edwardian author, E.M. Forster, uh, and the story is called The Machine Stops. Now, some of you may have read his other works, such as Room with a View, Morris, Room with a View is a, uh, a big film, for example. But the main thing about The Machine Stops, as I say in the materials, is it was written in 1909. The word computer didn't exist in 1909. It's quite extraordinary, really, when you, when you think about this. And, it, and it's um, an amazing story, uh, and it's one that I keep coming back to uh, every time when I'm sort of thinking about what's going on in, in technology, because in some ways, Forster was remarkably prescient. He, 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 for, he sort of forecast, foretold, many of the things that we're experiencing now. Uh, uh, if you don't see uh, aspects of Facebook and various other things, uh, YouTube and what have you in there, I, I, I'd be astonished. Forster wrote this story as um, a rebuttal of another English author of the time, H.G. Wells, who wrote a series of books, you know, them, um, The Time Machine, um, uh, oh, um, a bunch of other stuff, you know. Uh, uh, but um, what he, he 
he was writing about was a, a sort of kind of mixture of a utopian and dystopian type of world. Um, and, and in some ways, H.G. Wells was a person who saw technology as a kind of answer to society's ills. Don't forget, this is, you know, the early 1900s. Um, people were living in squalor. People lived in slums. Uh, you know, there were uh, no protections against overwork and so on. There were still boys going up chimney uh, as chimney sweeps up chimney spouts and things like that. Um, factory work was brutal, hard, and people died young. And there wasn't much in the way of um, uh, public health, if you like. Although, at that point, I have to say, the first major public sewage system had been installed in London. That probably made the biggest difference to people's lives clean water and your sewage being taken away and put somewhere else other than the water you're going to drink. Um, this helped prevent uh, typhoid and all those other diseases that were transmitted in this kind of way. Um, if I can just remind you, there was a, a series of paintings in the 18th century by Hogarth and he did uh, two particular drawings um, one was called Gin Alley, uh, because gin was incredibly cheap to make at that time, bathtub gin, easily knock it up. And, and the drawing shows people lolling around, drunk out of their heads, um, you know, mothers with babies falling out of their arms and things like this, generally um, awful, awful. The companion picture to this is Beer Alley, and it shows people very jolly and healthy and drinking and not drunk, but sort of um, productive and going about their work and so on. And the reason for these two pictures was, again, because in the 18th century, um, there was no clean water. So actually people used to drink something they called small beer for breakfast. And small beer was low alcohol beer. I mean, it wasn't the sort of stuff you, you get today, like the craft beers, the IPA, that sort of thing. But it was safer to drink that than it was to drink water. Um, so, you know, we move into the early 20th century, that kind of problem is gone, but still we have the problems about, you know, limited lifespans and all those sorts of things. It was also the time of um, transportation to Australia and so on, the convicts and things like that. So anyway, I want you to start with that. I want you to think about it. I want you to reflect on it. Um, I've also put in a reference to a book published this year, which I haven't read yet, called Silence by Don DeLillo, an American author, which apparently takes some of the themes. So um, we go through the history in some ways of the internet and technology in week one. Week two, um, I move into uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, algorithms, and blockchain. And there's I hate to tell you this, but there are um, a lot, there's a lot of reading there. Now, just to calm you, the reading is often quite short. Most of it's out there on the internet. There are short pieces, there are blogs, um, there are some journal articles, but generally um, it may look a lot, but it's not. In a certain number of cases, I've given you reports I don't expect, you know, the report might be 100 pages long. I don't expect you to read the whole report. I expect you to skim through it. I expect you to get an idea of what it's about. And if it interests you, then please read it. And it, but it'll be a good source for your research paper when, when you come along. Week three, uh, we look at big data, privacy, Facebook, and other apps that scrape your data and use it in various ways. And I will focus on a particular scandal, some of which you know, the Cambridge Analytica Facebook scandal, which I think is very important and I think is a watershed in, in the way that we now think about um, what social media is doing. And so really, this is a focus on social media, something which you're all familiar with, but perhaps not totally familiar with what goes on around social media, what you've been given access to and what you are able to see and so on. Week four is about health and automation. Can AI and these kinds of things help improve our health? 
Um, those of you who've got iPhones and other kinds of phones will know there's a health app on there. Uh, if you've got an uh, Apple Watch, which I don't, you know, it'll monitor how many steps you take and what your heart rate is and things like that. So um, the whole process of automation is becoming quite important in that way. Blockchain may be a very important part of this in terms of uh, dealing with um, how we distribute and give access to patient records and things like this. There are also questions about can we use the data that we generate as people and patients for health projects? Um, Google's DeepMind has been doing some work in this area and it raises a whole series of ethical issues which we're going to have to deal with. Um, week five is government and technology. Government, of course, wants to automate as many services as possible. Uh, and Estonia, a small Baltic country uh, next to Sweden and Russia, um, is probably the most advanced country in the world in terms of using automation uh, as a way of running all its government services uh, and things like this. But whereas that's for the good, governments are also using um, these uh, autom automation processes for the bad. And you can think about, you know, um, Netflix's Black Mirror, some of the episodes in there. But what I really want you to think about is, and I've put some reading in here, is about how China is using social media, automation, artificial intelligence to monitor its citizens. You know, when you have a country of um, over one and a half billion people, um, keeping tabs on them all, why you want to keep tabs on them all, I don't know. Well, you do because it's a centralized government. Um, it's hard. So you need ways of doing this. And so uh, automation steps in here and, and, and does this. Um, I, think it's, um, I think we've got serious issues. Week six, which is the final week, um, is a slightly odd one, I think. But I'm going to be talking about brain hacking and transhumanism and by this I mean what happens when we start to modify our own brains um, either through the use of uh, uh, electrical inputs or um, synthetic drug inputs and things like this and that we begin to transform ourselves into kind of hybrid humans if you like. Um, the Israeli historian uh, Yuval Harari, some of you may have read his book Sapiens but he's written a book called uh, um, Homo Deus, the, the um, thesis of which is we are now in a post-evolutionary stage. We don't need to wait for evolution to make us better. We can begin to design ourselves. So what do we want to design? What are the limits on what we design? Should we be designing people? Already we select gender for babies and so on, not always legally. Uh, we have techniques like CRISPR, where we can go in and cut out bits of the DNA uh, um, spiral and, and replace it with others. So we are at a point where we can begin to make humans what we want to make. So um, I hope you'll join me on this journey, and I hope you enjoy it. And just to reinforce that the Research paper is, is a way of allowing you to get into something in detail and I hope enjoy it. I hope you do anyway. So see you um, before long. Bye.